Well, I'm back, as you can see. Today, I would like to discuss... I would like to discuss tips about locks, dreads, dreadlocks, whatever you want to call them. My tips are... Like I said, I probably, I probably said this in a previous video, but I know it's, I don't know, kind of, to some people, it could seem kind of weird that, I guess to them, my hair doesn't look, it looks unkept, but I, I retwist locks. Like I said, and I said it again, I said, thousand times a million times don't matter teach his own i choose not to retwist my i re, i choose not to retwist my locks that's just that's just me that doesn't mean i push that on everybody else so i just want to speak on that but tips on locks Going back to like I said, with the two each is on, and that that I say that to go down, to, I mean to get to the products. A lot of people like to use lock locking gels, beeswax, even gel. I've seen some people use gel. I've known some people to use honey. Like, you know, just, just, you know, whatever it is that they, they, they're their preference to retwist their locks. In which, I'm not against any of that. You know, teach his own. I just want to give you some tips from my experience. Before this set, I, I would like to say I had a different set. I might include some pictures. but I had a different set than this. The set before was of course longer. And I only say longer because that's another video, we ain't gonna talk about that. But they were longer and they were manicured. Meaning I, I got retwists, not regularly, not like every two weeks, not once a month. Even when I used to get retwists, it was if I just really felt like it, only because I had people all in my ear saying, it's time for you to get a retwist, time for you to get a retwist, when you gonna do something to this, and all of that. Or, it was a special occasion coming up, like, graduation. And very seldom, they made my birthday. Something like that. But, I say that to say, that before I got in the lock game, you know, lock community, you know, dread family, whatever you want to call it. I, before I got into it, I did research, but I didn't do heavy research, like like how I do now. And which it's okay because even if you were somebody like me and did the same thing, you know, you're going to learn. That's that's the that's the in my opinion, that's the reason why it's called a a log journey or a dread journey. Because along that journey, just like your life journey. You learn lessons, like, <coughs> you learn lessons, you have trials and errors, all of that, and that's, that was me. I used to use, because I have, like, two different types, I have, like, two different types of texture, hair, like, in the front of my hair, sides mostly the front of my hair and the sides it's like this you know this, this this curl it's not really it's not a tight curl in my opinion it's not like a really really tight curl because you really like look at my hair and it, you really like 
felt my hair. It's really not so much of a tight curl, but it's it's a, it's, a, it's a nice curl to it though. It's not coarse. My hair is not coarse. My hair is actually soft. But the back of my hair, it has a looser, a looser uh, curl pattern. And I really, I'll show you for another video because that'd be too late. But it's a it's a looser texture back here, and I'm sure that other people probably have that same thing going on with their hair like it's like to you know different textures so I bought I bought some locking gel and to be more precise I had Murray's locking gel and I had Murray's be beeswax I, don't, I mainly I, at first I just bought the locking gel and I had um, a friend retwist my hair one time. I had her retwist it because I felt like I felt like because I couldn't see my whole head that it wouldn't come out right. That's why I wanted somebody else to do it. So when I asked her to do it, she really, I'm not saying she didn't know how to, she just never retwist locks before. And really in my opinion, it's really not that hard. Like, that's why, you know, Anyways, but <laughs> it's really not that hard. But so I asked her to do it, and she did. She did a really great job. Like for her to never have retwisted locks before, she did a great job. I don't think I have any pictures of that. So if I insert any sound in any, um, you don't put like that. You'd be lucky if I insert in some any any of them because I don't think I have any pictures from when she retwisted it. And this is the reason why, because she used a locking gel, and I put the do rag on my head, everything. Went to sleep, woke up the next day, and was like, I never even had a retwist. So I'm like, all right, what is it? I, I felt like because of my hair texture, and especially in the back, <clears throat> I had to get something a tighter hold, which this is what we all like. I'm sure a lot of people witnessed this, you know, trying to get something to really hold. So I switched over to the beeswax. I switched over to the beeswax. And, I mean, yeah, it worked. <laughs> it gave me that tighter hole I was looking for. But later on down the line, when I stopped getting retwists, and I was just letting my hair just really just grow, wash it, when it's time and just let it grow I started noticing like like I trimmed that set too I didn't cut it like I didn't shave my whole head I, I trimmed it and I was I'm still noticing still to this day like I even with this lock with this lock it's not fully locked like it's definitely not fully locked right here it's really spongy like that's not locked because I pretty much almost I pretty much combed it out just trying to get out the beeswax and I still like I said to this day that was recently I still to this day find um like little beeswax little you know and it's mostly in the back of my eyes. it's mostly in the back of my eyes. because you know over time beeswax is it's, it's wax it's like candle it's like candle wax so basically you know you get a retwist you outside it's it's wax so it attracts everything it attracts lint dirt everything so that's like essentially that's what i was picking out my hair it was all it wasn't the beeswax but it was what all the beeswax collected over time so it made like little lint like little lint balls in my um in my locks so you know like i said to each his own with that and uh, another thing i will include also if you are even after watching this video and watching probably many other videos before this and still choose to use you know beeswax any locking gels whatever whatever what happened i will always recommend less is more the less you use of that product the longer it can 
like the not longer but the better because like I said that's what I was doing like I said I was looking for a tighter hold and so that therefore I was like taking it up on, on one lock just you know you know you know I'm not I know I'm not the only one so don't you know you can say what you want to say in the comment section but I know I'm not the only one so I just want to say that for people who are new in the lock game um still in the lock game it don't matter what stage you are and if this is something that you do i would just recommend not using so much also i will also look for products that are more water based see that see you, you didn't hear me complain much about that locking gel i had but that beeswax is thick it's really thick and it's really thick compared to the lock and gel like if I would have got a little of that lock and gel it would like rub it rubbed it in it would dissolve if I would have got that beeswax rubbed it on my fingers it would have dissolved but it still got like this almost greasy kind of sticky consistency to it so that's a, that's a test if you do your product like that and then you can rub in your fingers and it almost like just dissolves away like probably how water would do kind of sort of I would use that but if you you know get your product and you know it got like some type of real greasy like thick consistency to it that you know that you don't even like on your fingers I wouldn't even put that in my hair if I don't even like it on my fingers that that, that feeling on my fingers I wouldn't put it in my hair so like I said that's just that's just me that's just some tips I just want to enlighten people enlighten some people on also, another thing about dyeing your hair, I know y'all probably heard this a thousand times too, but dyeing your hair, you know, this is from experience as well. Dyeing your hair. I feel as though, like I said it again, to each his own, like, as long as you take in the right protocols after dyeing your hair, even when you have locks, great. But in my honest opinion, I feel like it's always better to dye your hair first before you uh, begin to lock your hair. And that's because for one, you'll have a even a more even color because when you try to dye locks, I mean, I know your locks probably well some people probably the locks are besides my locks. And if not, I mean look how thick this is. I mean like really look how thick this is. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a huge spun. So imagine like that that dye is not gonna penetrate too much through this. It's really not. So, therefore, it's not gonna penetrate too much through that. It's nice. So you're not gonna have like so much of an even dye. But it's okay because some people like like you know the different tones and the highlights in their hair. But like I said, it's just better and it's less damaging because if you're a loose natural or if you just have loose hair, anyways, like straight hair. It's like, it, it's still damaging to the hair, but in my opinion, it's not as damaging when you're talking about a lock. Like, because you gotta think about it. Like, in all reality, locks, the shaft of locks, really is mostly dead hair anyways. That's why when you see people combing out their locks, it's so, it's so much hair that comes out with it. Because you know how everybody hair, everybody hair sheds, everybody hair sheds. But for us, for us who have locks, dreads, when a piece of hair falls, when like you know that 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 little curly Q falls, nine times out of ten, it might fall into your shirt. But then nine times out of ten, it might fall. Um, like say, for instance, it fall like on this lock then it'll uh, it's just gonna just merge with that lock over time so basically what i'm saying most of your most of your your shed hair falls into the shaft of your lock and you know that's that's what it, that's just what it is look it up like 
that's why and only, you don't even have to look it up if you look closely i guarantee you because i see it all the time in my locks and especially if you have lighter locks you will see this if you ever pull it out or a piece of your hair ever fell fell out your head now and i'm not saying pull out like you just intentionally pull out something that you just like tip into your a strand of hair got snagged somewhere and it came out and you saw the the, the the tip of it the very end of it that came out your scalp it's that little white little piece on there that's like the ending part of your hair shaft like your hair follicle if you look at pay, pay attention to the shaft your locks you might see those same blood dots and you just really look at it you might see those same blood dots <clears throat> and that's like i said exactly what i just said it's that hair that shade of hair that falls out and it falls onto the shaft of the lock and then it just merges on with that so like i said that's why it's just, it's always it's, it's kind of like more damaging anyways because it's already dead hair while you know you're gonna keep adding more attention to it even with you got another tip you gotta be uh careful with these <laughs> you gotta be careful with these i, I wouldn't even recommend rubber bands i wouldn't even recommend rubber bands because i used to my last set i used to wear rubber bands all the time i bought that whole list i think like 67 cent at walmart you go to the the work section or supply section basically like the work supply business supply school supply section and you will see that pack of rubber bands those the beige rope band they come in all little thick size and stuff like that i bought i bought that and i used to keep them on my wrist like on, on deck bro i would not recommend those because i mean you see it you, you pull it off and you'll see little hair balls all over the, the band why is that because your hair that 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 rope band is doing nothing but rubbing up against your locks like this so say for instance it's the band it's your lock if your hair is in a ponytail and you constantly keeping a ponytail it's rubbing up against that it's rubbing up against that so the more it rubs up against that and it pulls out it pulls hair follicles out of that lock it's a no-brainer for your for you to you know see that over time your hair is thinning out and it's due to I'm not even just blaming rubber bands. It, it can be even these little hair ties like this. So you gotta be careful, like, about pulling your hair tight. You have to be careful about wearing your hair in a ponytail all the time. Like, all day yesterday I had my hair in a ponytail. <clears throat> and I was like, nah, today I'm gonna keep my hair down. I'm gonna use my hair in a ponytail because it's hot. But I'm like, I'm gonna mostly try to keep it down. And if I do get that hot, then I just throw my tail on. So I'm like, that's what I got it for. So, like I said, just to keep that, that, that thinning all, to keep the thinning away, and also keep tension off of your hairline. Like I have also another video that's coming up that I've been told. I've told one of my supporters once before that I was gonna make a video on <laughs> on tapers, and I'm still in the process of making that video. I want to get all the pictures I can. So I can really, I'm really incorporate pictures in that video so I can show you about tapers. But that's another video, like I said. But like I said, keeping your hair in the ponytail so much, you don't want to push back your hairline. Like, and that's not to say that I push back my hairline. My hairline has always been, been there and it's been strong, always. It just always, always had them, everything. It's just that taper. But anyways, not to talk about that. But anyways, like I said, over time, and people notice it too. Over time, like especially if you're a person that loves in your hair style, doesn't matter what it's what style it is, and with that style, you pulling your hair back. I wouldn't recommend. Even if you pull it back, it's fine. I would just wouldn't recommend you pulling it back so tight. I mean, your hair, especially if you have a style, your hair is already undergoing tension, and you putting more tension by putting it up in there in that ponytail, and especially if it's tight. Um, I know it's some more tips out there, but like I said, I mainly want to give you guys some tips from ex experience from me, because I don't want to be just speaking on something that I guess you can say I really don't know anything about, but those are all personal experiences of mine, 
I have another video that's coming up. Like I said, I'm busy explaining about the tapers, about getting tapers. Nothing against tapers, but I just want to put some precautions out there before people decide to get tapers. This video kind of went over longer than I, what I expected, which mostly all my videos do that because I know, I know, I talk a lot. But <laughs> I'm going to end it right here. Peace.